Change always brings conflict. It's a phrase that's bounced around my head for over a decade. My team of underdogs, working moms and career changers, we had almost no experience in the tech world whatsoever, including me. And we took on an ambitious goal to build and grow a hiring software platform against fierce competition from funded startups and giant corporations. And we grew from one to 300 employees to over 10,000 clients. Last year, we sent over a billion individual emails to job seekers. That's over 80 a second. And we received awards for our growth, including 11 years in a row on the Inc. 5000 list. That's something that less than 100 companies have done ever. But the one thing more consistent than our growth was change. We changed over and over and over again. When there was an economic downturn, we had to change. Every time we reached a new level, we had to change. When new technology entered the marketplace, we had to change. In fact, even when the economy was great, there was a talent shortage and we had to change. And when there was a worldwide pandemic where most companies literally stopped hiring for over a year, we had to change. Change brings conflict. By conflict, I mean change brings disagreement, it brings uncertainty, it brings fear. And the bigger the change, the bigger the conflict. Today we stand at the beginning of what some people say is the biggest change to the business world since the invention of the internet. Clearly I'm talking about generative AI like ChatGPT, and it's crazy exciting, at least if you're an AI company. But if you're not, if you're just the average employee, it's downright scary. They're hearing almost every day on the news that their jobs won't exist in the future. Now, I'm not here to talk about AI and when it's gonna replace humans, and if it's gonna end the world as we know it. What I'm here to talk about is leadership because when your team is afraid of the future, you have a massive, massive problem. And luckily that problem can be solved, but it's solved through collaboration, driven by strong leaders with lots of empathy. So today I wanna to share three key tactics that I use to drive and steer my team through the change to get to the other side. Tactic number one are fractional professionals. Look, the, the teams of the future, they're made up of players that don't look the same as the players of the past. Uh, I'm not talking about whether they work from home or work in the office. I'm talking about when and how much they work. When there's a major change going on, when, when things are changing technology-wise around you, there's a good chance your team is going to need some outside help. But you're not gonna need these experts full time and you're not gonna wanna pay for them to sit around. This is going to require us to get better at dealing with fractional professionals. Three examples come to mind from, from my experience. Our sales mentor, our tech problem solver, and our agile expert. Each of these individuals came to play for our team while they were also playing for other companies in other jobs. We would plug them into the spots that we needed them and they would fill the gaps that we lacked. Each of these people showed up when we needed them, bringing the skills and knowledge that we lacked and giving us a bridge. They weren't just here to perform a job, they were actually there to level up my team so that when they weren't there anymore, they could do the job better. Leaders of the future are going to have to deal with these situations. Now, where a lot of leaders might look at these individuals and say, Maybe they're not loyal. Maybe they're not focused. This is a huge liability for our company. I saw it as a huge advantage. I was able to get just the right amount of knowledge, just the right amount of expertise, and, and honestly, at just the right budget. I was able to be flexible as we changed, as we evolved to, to give and take the amount of effort, the amount of time, the amount of, of value we're generating from these fact, fractional professionals. Now, if you're a leader directing a team through the AI revolution, you're going to have to get better at dealing and collaborating with different types of individuals and specifically these fractional professionals. Tactic number two is collective intelligence. Look, our teams are made up of people that are each a genius in their own way. And they have tools and tactics 
that give them leverage. But generative AI, it is not anything like Microsoft Excel. It is completely different. Now, I'm not here talking about how generative AI is going to replace employees. In fact, the real benefit is going to be when we combine generative AI with our team. Collective intelligence is when you take data, technology, people, and yes, a tool like ChatGPT, and you merge it together into one collaborative working unit. Together, they are more powerful than separate parts on their own. This collaborative intelligence gives us the ability to do more than we could before. To give you an example, customer support was one of our biggest uh, goals and our biggest sticking points. We wanted to provide amazing support and my team was better than almost anybody at responding to questions, to being responsive to our customers' needs. But our goal was to be proactive. Our goal was always to be able to figure out how could we predict problems before they happen. But predicting and being proactive, well, it's, number one, it's extremely hard. And number two, it's insanely expensive. And as a bootstrap startup, we didn't have money for that. So our enablement team got together and came up with an ingenious plan. We would monitor users as they were using our software, and we'd identify certain sticking points. When we could identify a sticking point, we created automated systems that would send them an email. These emails were specific to them. More importantly, they were personalized to where they were at in the software and what problems they might be experiencing. We provided them tips and tricks and FAQs and all types of information that hopefully would help them solve their own problem on their own. The key was these emails were written in the voice, in the language, in the lingo of their account manager, as if that account manager had been looking at their account, researching what was going on, and had read their mind, had reached out proactively to help them. That tone of voice, that it sounds like a human, was vitally important to us. And more important than anything else was if that user was to hit reply, that email would be immediately routed back to the account manager who could continue on that personal conversation. In the future, as AI becomes part of our teams, we have to make sure that we don't lose the human voice, the human connection, that we don't end up with our users getting stuck somewhere in a dead end with AI and having to start all over again with a user, having to tell their story and their problems once again. Leaders of the future will have to get better and be able to become experts at merging their technology and people together to create this collaborative intelligence. Tactic number three is friction meetings. Look, when one person or one computer is working on a problem or working on a process, things go pretty good because they're in complete control. But as we add more people and more technology to a given situation, it gets complicated. People start competing and arguing over who's in charge and who has the right of way. Any time that that happens, we get friction. Friction in business happens because, well, when you have multiple people going in different directions at different speeds at, and in different priorities, but they rely on each other, we're going to have conflict. We're going to get out of sync. Like in a four-way intersection with no stop signs, at some point there's going to be a crash. In the business world, that crash looks like somebody dropping the ball. And that's going to lead to finger pointing and the blame game. And while it's true, somebody was right and somebody was wrong, at the end of the day, the customer always loses. Leaders of the future will have to figure out how to deal with that friction and reduce it. For us, we had what we called friction meetings. Anytime that we had a process or a project or a situation where more than one person was working together and where those people reported to different managers, there was going to be conflict. There was going to be problems. There was going to be fighting for who had the right of way. We would take and put those individuals in a meeting together, in a proactive meeting cadence. We didn't want to have to keep solving those problems over and over and over again, so we decided to be proactive. A friction meeting looks pretty simple. We would get the team together and we would discuss any priority issues. More importantly, we would review the tape. We'd look at the tape of past situations where there were problems, and then we'd imagine doing it in a different way. We'd identify changes that we could make in all the different parts of the team so that it would be smoother next time. You see, leadership isn't about solving the same problem over and over and over again. Leadership is about solving the problem so it doesn't happen again improving the process and making it more streamlined. Now, 
If you're a leader and you have a team and you're headed into this new world of AI at work, I would just suggest one simple thing. Keep in mind what your actual job is. No matter how much news there is about AI, no matter how much hype, no matter how much fear, no matter how much noise is out there in the world about it, that's not your job. Your job as a leader is to bring your team together. And those businesses that make it through the transition, through the change, while limiting the amount of conflict, will be those that have leaders that know how to reduce that noise, how to reduce that conflict. Specifically, how do you take and transition from uncertainty to clarity? How do you turn friction into flow? And most importantly, how do you create an environment where collaboration exists so that your team can work their way together through the change and to the other side? Thank you.